All right, here we go. Thank you for showing up today. We didn't know what the weather was going to be like, but uh, I see you just like me. I, every time I get a chance to get together and hear something new and hear something loving and hear something different, I want to do it. You know, the last thing I want to listen to is my thoughts. <laughs> They're at the bottom of the totem pole. Is my, is my thoughts. And so I'm Earl Purdy. I want to welcome you to Facebook Live. And I also want to welcome you here in person. And we are doing a course in miracles. And we're going to talk about how you are entitled to miracles today. We're going to talk about how you are entitled to expressions of love, how you are entitled to peace, how you are entitled to abundance, how you are entitled. And the word is entitled which I think is a very interesting way that the Course in Miracles puts it. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to love. I am entitled to happiness. You are entitled to happiness. You are entitled to love. You are entitled to freedom. That's your right. You are entitled to it. You, don't, you shouldn't have to pay for it, and you shouldn't have to earn it. It's, it, it's, it is what you are entitled to by that which created you. And anything that's telling you otherwise, the Course defines as the ego. Anything that's telling us anything other than loving thoughts, we're listening to the wrong voice. So based on that, how many of you th think you've heard the wrong voice in the last 24 hours? <laughs> All right, so we are on the same page, right? So we're going to start out with our theme song, which is what? I am not a victim of the world I see. Here we go. What? I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim, say what, of the world I see. I'm not a victim now. Of the world I see. What does that mean? I'm not a victim of my mom, I'm not a victim of my pa, not a victim of even circumstance at all. I'm not a victim of the world I see. Cause what's happening now? What I done to me? Does that include the good stuff? Yeah. yeah. I'm not a victim of the future, not a victim of the past. Not a victim of anything that really doesn't last. I'm not a victim. Oh yeah. Of the world I see. Cause what's happening now is what I done to me. That's what's happening now. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim now wow, of the world I see. No, you are not. Boom, 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 boom. Mm-mm. I'm not a victim of the world I see. Sometimes it seems like I am. Seems like if you all would change and be different, then I'd be happy. <laughs> if everybody just be like me and do what I say, <laughs> the world would be a better place. <laughs> so, that's, have you ever felt that way? Yeah. Like if somebody else was acting different, then you'd be happy. Have you ever done that in a relationship? Mm. Has anybody ever wanted the person that they were in a relationship with to be different? some kind of way so that they could be happy. Uh, anybody's ever done that, raise your hand. So far, we've already had a miracle. Everybody's agreed on something. So we already see this is a course in miracles right here. The fact that everybody went, yeah. Okay, so we're going to be on Lesson 77 uh, in the Course in Miracles workbook, the Foundation for Inner Peace version of the course. Uh, the Foundation for Inner Peace version of the course is the Blue Book. Uh, that's the these were the original publishers of the Course in Miracles. It's the Foundation for Inner Peace. 
And it's going to be on page 137. Uh, I am entitled to miracles. I thought that that would be a really, really wonderful <coughs> lesson to work with today. So especially going into the next phase. But it also means that this is a section that you're going to have to participate more in in terms of your own thinking and what you say to yourself. So if you just want to be a passive listener, you won't get the benefits, I don't believe, out of this section. This section is full of what some people would call affirmations, which really are nothing but statements of the truth. It's just for once I'm telling the truth about myself, even if I don't believe it. Just because you don't believe you're loving and lovable and you deserve to be loved, you're not believing it doesn't have anything to do with you're not deserving to receive love. Do you know that the way that you think about yourself doesn't have any effect on the way that God or your creator or someone that really loves you thinks about you? So real love never deviates. Fake love always does. So really... Do you know the Course in Miracles is basically asking you to learn how to choose between fake love and real love? And do you know that it's also teaching us how to let go of the blocks that keep us from allowing ourselves to have real love? So the Course in Miracles is an undoing. It's not a doing. It's an undoing. So does it take longer to construct or build a building than it does to demolish it? It takes, longer. it takes longer to build it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the way you should look at getting past your blocks and your fears and your insecurities and everything else. That you, Those need to be undone, and it doesn't take as long to undo your negative feelings and emotions and beliefs as it does for you to acquire them. Mm -hmm. So if someone tells you over and over and over and over and over again, uh, one of my favorite comedy shows is called The Goldbergs. I don't know if any of you have ever watched it before, but it's a TV show. But the father's constantly referring to the kids as morons. <laughs> and his way of telling him he loved them was, today you were a little less moron than you are normally. Okay, now don't be so spiritual that you lost your sense of humor, okay? All right. <laughs> don't get too spiritual on me now. Okay, don't get too serious. The point that I'm... Don't be a moron. Don't be a moron, right? <laughs> you know, the point that I'm making is... If you hear that over and over and over and over and over again, then you'll get to the point that you might believe that that's what you are. And so that will have a lot to do with how you feel about yourself and your self-esteem. And so if you are born and you're immediately told you are a sinner or that you were born in sin and that you were born basically flawed just by showing up, don't you think you're getting a core belief about yourself that's not very positive? Sure. Okay, so if I have a core belief about myself that I'm bad, guilty, and sinful, and my thoughts create my reality, because that's what most people don't realize. Most people don't realize it's our thoughts, feelings, emotions, and beliefs that are conscious and unconscious. It's our mind and our thoughts that's determining our experience and what we perceive. It's all coming from the mind. Uh, regular people aren't taught this. They're taught that there are bodies that die one day that have no creative power, uh, who are a victim of a ton of things that's happening to you that you have nothing to do with. That's the way that the world teaches us. And it's, it's obviously not true. Why is it obviously not true? Because there's too much fear and unrest and unhappiness in the world. And so there's no way that you're practicing love and practicing the truth and all you see around you is chaos and fear. That should be our clue right there, that we must not be doing something right. It's how much fear and separation there is. So the Course in Miracles says we need to have another way of looking at things. We need a new thought system. We need a new, if, our, if your thoughts are creating your perception, then all you need to do to change your experience would be to, change your thoughts. would be what to do to change your, right? I'll say it again. You all are right. Just say it with more enthusiasm. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> To change your experience, what do you need to change? Thoughts. Whose thoughts? My thoughts. My thoughts. Your thoughts. Whose thoughts? My thoughts. Okay. Who do, whose thoughts do you have the most control over? My thoughts. Okay, so wouldn't that be the easier path? Yes. Okay, but do you still find yourself trying to use your mind to figure out how you can change somebody else? 
every day. Have you tried to use your mind to try to figure out what you need to change outside of yourself in order to be happy? Maybe I need to be in a new job. I need to be in a new city. I need to be in a new circumstance. The Course of Miracles is saying to us that whenever you take that approach, he says, you are guaranteed to end up in misery. Mm -hmm. I didn't say sort of you're going to end up in misery. It's the Course of Miracles says, no, you, you're guaranteed to end up in misery if you make the way you feel depending on what somebody else does. Now, I have met I have met very few people who didn't agree with that and still go out and walk out of the room and still try to change somebody. <laughs> or try to figure out who needs to be different or what needs to change. So there's a difference between intellectually knowing the truth and then being able to act on it. The, uh, the, the, the Course of Miracles says knowledge does not induce action. You can know the right thing to do and not do it. So just because you think you know something doesn't mean you're actualizing it or practicing it at all. Uh, the action aspect is going to come from how you're seeing things. Because that's going to be the meaning you give everything. And then you're going to act on that meaning. And so the Course in Miracles says that the way that you learn the new thought system, how do you do that? It says, well, the way that you learn the new thought system is through repetition. Just like the guy that was told he was a moron, moron over and over again to the point he thought he was. How else do you think you're going to get these new loving ideas about yourself unless you start to repeat those over and over and over and over and over again? And unless you're reminded of the truth about yourself over and over and over again. And that's what the, the, the present and the gift that I want to give you today through the Course in Miracles. A lesson that's really about the most loving, powerful, positive things that you could say to yourself and that you could think so that you can see your physical experience begin to manifest those thoughts, those loving thoughts, those powerful thoughts. <clears throat> Are you also aware that enthusiasm creates? It's amazing how people want to manifest things that they have no enthusiasm about. Mm -hmm. So if we could get anywhere near the enthusiasm of the average football fan when it comes to God and the truth and love, what kind of experience do you think you have? Wow. Yeah. Men, a lot of times women complain that men don't express their feelings and emotions enough. That they are so quiet and they, we can be so stoic and so unemotional. Until it's our favorite football team or baseball team or <laughs> basketball or whatever the sports thing that generally men are into. You hear them scream and shout and jump up and down and hug each other and dance around and twerk. <laughs> I'm telling you, men who normally don't show any enthusiasm, they lose their friggin' mind about their favorite team. And that's the way we should be about love, truth, God, spirit, ourselves, each other. But sometimes that's a difficult thing to capture in a class or in a group. We'll do just the opposite. It'll be like, how quiet can I be about everything that's happened? I say I want God. I say I want peace. I say I want abundance. I say I want healing. I say I want right relationships. Enthusiasm creates. Enthusiasm creates. So when people tell me what they want and I don't hear any enthusiasm behind it, I don't really personally believe that that's what they really want. I think they, a lot of times they're saying what they think they should say they want. But the thing that they're really excited about, how many times have you come in here and I've been snoring during the class? You see my enthusiasm about this every single time you walk in the door. And, and that's been, it's been that way for 43 years because it is giving me what I want. It's giving me everything it's promising me. It's giving me more peace. It's giving me more sanity. It's giving me more loving people. It's giving me more forgiveness. Everything that the Course in Miracles has promised me, I have seen myself experience some form of it. And everybody that really let me help them and work with them and they recognize they don't know, but they want to know. I've also seen that with people that I've been blessed enough that Spirit was sent to me for counseling and things like that. Because Spirit said, I'm not going to send anybody to you who doesn't love you the way you already are. To, number one. And the way that you express yourself is best for them at their level of understanding. So somebody that's coming from spirit, from love, that's not going to be somebody you're working on all the time trying to change each other and trying to figure out how, you know, and you judging and condemning and trying to change each other. That's the person that your fear sent to you. 
That's the person that your ego said. Life is meant to be easy. Easy. This book uses the word easy. It's almost sacrilegious, isn't it? Easy. I want an easy life. Chuck that idea of no pain, no gain. Because you're telling yourself, unless I have pain, I'm not going to benefit. Then you're shocked when your life is full of struggle and pain. Well, you just said pain and struggle is a condition of your benefiting. You've already told the universe that you don't even believe you can benefit unless you go through pain. The Course in Miracles puts it slightly different. It says, now, you're not, you don't have to go through pain to learn anything. Pain is not necessary for you to learn anything. But you're going to make decisions that are wrong from time to time because you've forgotten who you are. So you're going to put yourself in situations that you are experiencing pain in or struggle in. So it says, so what happens is spirit takes you where you are and then takes that situation and shows you how you can have a miracle or a blessing out of that situation. But don't you think for a second that it was necessary for you to go through pain for you to get that benefit? You put yourself through the pain, but spirit loves you so much. Out, like, you know, like the GPS, you make a wrong move. It usually doesn't take you back to where you were before you made the wrong move. It usually starts right where you are and then moves you in the direction that you're supposed to be going. And so you made the mistake and then it corrects it. And then you are glad and you're usually not arguing, arguing with the GPS. <laughs> you th you're probably saying, thank you, God, for this GPS. So you still have a GPS. You have a God or good positioning system. That's a GPS. And I listen, and, and it's called the Holy Spirit is the name it's called. Love is the name it's called. So you have a guide to everything you want, but you're in charge of the journey. It's like if you have, hire a guide on a safari, they show you where to go, but you're still the one in charge of the journey. But you'd be stupid not to listen to the guide who knows the way. So try not to have relationships with stupid people. Stupid people are people who don't believe in any power greater than themselves, any intelligence greater than themselves, and the idea that they are alone and on their own. They're just stupid. They're not bad. They're just stupid. Why do I use the word stupid? Because people don't want to be stupid. So if you say it's stupid for you not to follow the teachings of truth or God, you're much more likely to follow them because you've been programmed not to be stupid. <laughs> wow. Wow. Like it's stupid to get in a relationship with somebody that you're going out with or interested in going out with and all they're talking about is their previous relationship and the grievances that they got with the person they just was with. See, that's stupid, it, right? Because they're already showing you, they're already showing you that they don't take responsibility for their experience and that they blame others for what they're going through. You fool yourself and be stupid. What do you mean? Well, you think you're so special they're not going to be that way with you. And that's why you overlook it. Well, I know it was that way with this person. <laughs> Me? They would never have that attitude because I'm the latest one. You see what I'm saying? But the course, but the course has already made me aware somebody that's living in the past is not someone I want to be in a relationship because they won't recognize that I am not your last boyfriend. I'm not your last partner. I'm not your last mate. I, I literally am not. So for you to deal with me as if I'm the person you were with before, do you know the Course in Miracles says you are a delusional person? Woo! Woo! Yeah, but you know, she got pretty legs, though. <laughs> I know none of you have ever put the outer or the physical or the material before the spiritual with anybody. I know that's why you're looking at me like that. Like, what? The person's body? I was attracted to a person because of how their body looked? Yeah. How many people here have ever been attracted to anybody because of the way they look in, in your whole life? You know, the way, okay, see, again, that's, that's a miracle again. We just did it again. Right. But did that tell you anything about their mind, their beliefs, what they thought? Now, who you're going to be with is the mind. Not the body. That's the body is the lampshade. But the person is the lamp bulb. So you need to get really clear that when you get in a relationship with someone, do you know that the Course of Miracles says when you get in a relationship with someone, 
I'm not just talking about romantic. When you get in a, in a relationship with someone, what you have agreed to is to experience the result of that person's thinking with them. If you're my partner and I'm having a bad day, you're going to experience the result of that with me, with the grumpy person that comes home. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I got, you know, a 9 is 500 credit score, and you hook up with me, you're going to have to be dealing with the fact of my credit score. So whenever you say you want to be in anything with anyone, you are saying, I want to be a part of the effect of what that person thinks with them. So when you're out with someone and you've met with someone, stop. What is it you should stop trying to be? You should stop trying to be interesting and put all your focus on being interested. So I'm asking questions because I'm interested. What do you think? What do you believe? What do you want to do? How do you see relationships? What would be cool relationship for you? What do you like to do for fun? What interests you? What's your attitude about spirituality? What's your attitude? Right? The other person is going to go, wow, this person is interested. That's impressive. You don't know how many times I've spent time with people. And have you done that? In the whole evening, they never asked me one thing about myself. <laughs> they talked about themselves the whole time. Why? Because they were trying to be interesting. They thought the way to have the relationship with me was to try to, to make me be so interested. They, they would be so interesting. So they're talking about themselves all the time. So then you walk away going, okay, now I know what kind of relationship I would be in with that person. This would be a person that's not really that into my point of view and what I'm thinking. See, already, they told me everything I need to know in the one date. So at that point, if I enter into the relationship, it's just because... I want to experience the result of that person's thoughts with them, and I don't have any idea what that should be because we haven't talked about it. We don't know what the purpose for us even being together is. If we're just together for physical pleasure and we say, hey, we just want to have a good time and have some physical pleasure, and y'all both sure about that, and you're not wanting something more serious, you know what's going to happen? You're going to have a holy, happy, healed, wonderful time with them because you both were on agreement of what your purpose is, and it was something both of you wanted to do together, and you were willing to take responsibility for it. So what happens if all of a sudden you start to have problems with that person? Well, the Course in Miracles would say, well, what you should tell yourself is, okay, we were having a really peaceful time together when our, we knew what our purpose was, which was to have a good time, and we really wanted to just connect for fun. Okay, evidently something has changed. What's changed? The purpose. Somewhere along the line, now one of us wants something different than what we wanted at first. Maybe one wants to be more serious now, right? And when they started out, they just wanted a light relationship. And they'll say something like, you know, uh, where is this headed? That's a pretty good one. Where is it going? Where is this relationship going now? See, that's the person letting you know that they, they, whatever the original premise is, it's beginning to change. And so now you all need to get clear again on why you're together if you're having conflict in a relationship. The Course in Miracles has a million things. If you've worked with me, you're not going to bring up something that the Course in Miracles doesn't give exactly the way to see that and to get out of it, plus working with all these other people that I've worked with. Then you can get the answer. You can get the answer. So one answer is, then the Course says, well, how do I get the answer? Well, he says, well, the first thing you need to do is you need to remember that you don't need to believe the new idea, you don't need to accept the new idea, and you don't need to welcome the new idea, and then I'm going to give you some new ideas, and you might resist them. So expect that to happen. That if you hear something different from what you believe, you might feel some resistance about that, because it's what? It's different from what you believe. Then the Course says, I'm just going to go further than that. It says, you're going to find some of these ideas hard to believe. Like there is no sin. There is, you're not guilty. You're not bad. You're not a temporary being that's just a body that's going to die one day. You are an unlimited love. You are a spiritual being. You are consciousness. You are mind. You have an, etern an eternal being. 
that continues to live on even after your body dies. You are, you are a spiritual being having a human experience trying to get rid of the blocks to love and happiness that's in your mind that you came to earth to get rid of and to help other people get rid of. You came here for a divine purpose. You came here for a purpose much bigger than your personal pleasures. Some souls get that. Some souls don't. I'm here for the ones that the Holy Spirit sends into my life to share this with. Right? That's the easiest way. It's the easiest person for me to talk to are the people who want to hear what I got to say. You win. That's why you're here. That's why I've many people online. So I give everything I got as sincerely as I can to those that I've been honored and blessed by God to, to have come into my life for the purpose of me being a voice for some good stuff to tell you. And I'm thankful for your enthusiasm about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, if you, but if how you reacted determined how I felt, would I not be breaking the very rule that I've been teaching? Because at that point, I would think you needed to be different in order for me to be happy. And you don't have to be in a different from the way you're feeling right now in order for me to be happy. You know how people show up when you don't need them. You know how everything shows up when you get, you got a job, you get job offers. You, mm -hmm. You're in a relationship, that's when most people show up who want to be in a relationship with you. Why? Because you're not lacking. And since you're not lacking, the, your world reflects it back to you. You're not lacking relationships, then you have relationships being presented to you because you, you have a consciousness of being able to do that. You know, people who have prosperity and abundance and they can take the form of money, at a certain point, they just seem to attract it out of thin air because at some point they have accepted that it's true for themselves. And because they've accepted it as true for themselves, whatever you accept as true becomes your physical reality. So you are entitled to miracles. And then he says, uh, some of the stuff is going to be quite startling and you're not asked to judge the ideas at all. You're not uh, asked to judge the ideas at all. Because why judge it when you could use it and see that it's true? There's no need to judge something that you could absolutely know beyond a shadow of a doubt. It's true. So in Lesson 77, the Course in Miracles says, Do me slowly, do me slowly, do me slowly, do me slowly. Okay? So uh, it says if you use the ideas, the ideas will show you that they're true. If you use the ideas, the ideas will show you that they are true. If you use the ideas, what? The ideas will show you that the ideas are true. So what is the first idea? You are entitled to miracles. You are entitled to miracles. And a miracle is uh, an expression of love. It's correct thinking. It's true perception. It's forgiveness. It's something that transcends the laws of time and space that we believe in. So a miracle transcends what, what, what a human being thinks is possible. A miracle doesn't operate uh, according to the same rules that he, people operate toward. So just because a doctor tells you that you have an incurable disease, that doesn't mean your disease couldn't be cured. Exactly. Because everybody in your family has been broke or had challenges, doesn't mean that that's got to be true for you. You, you can have an instantaneous healing of anything that you think is causing you fear in this very moment. And then, then the mind goes, well, then why don't we do that? He says, well, it's something you're valuing about the suffering that you're going through that's more important to you than the healing that you can have. Ooh, that's deep. Yeah, your suffering, is, your suffering is giving you some kind of payoff that you're not willing to let go of yet. And because you're not willing to let go of that payoff, you still have that issue that you wish were different. You got a financial issue and you never seem like you can get rid of that, then there's something, there's something for you that you see as a benefit for uh, not having financial abundance if you took it, abundance as finances. There's, there's many different ways. But I just want to use real everyday life examples to help bring these points home. You know, at some level, the reason why you don't have more is that you getting some kind of payoff out of not having it. That's what the Course says. 
And that until you see no value in the suffering or the lack that you're going through, then it's not going to go away. So if you've been dealing with your pattern and your issue for years and years, whatever that is, does that mean you still value what that pattern is giving you more than the miracle that you could have? And then the course will say, just say yes. Just say yes. Yeah, just say, just, say, just say yes so you can get past it and we can have the healing. So then you go, well, okay, you are entitled to love. He says a miracle is a state of completion and abundance. That's one of the definitions. And I like to substitute a lot. So you are entitled to a state of completion and abundance. You are entitled to health. You are entitled to love. You are entitled to loving relationships. You're entitled to it. Why? Because of what you are. What? Just because of what you are. Just because of who you are. Just because, not just because of what the world tells you that you should be. That's different. That's different. You're entitled to miracles because of what you are. Divine. Spirit. Love. Me. You. We are one. We deserve it because of who we are. We are love. You are love. You are loving and you are lovable. And anything that tells you that you're not is a lie. And anything you tell yourself opposite to that is a lie. So every time you tell yourself you're not deserving of love, you are not good enough, or you have shame, or you have guilt, or you're telling yourself any of that stuff, you are lying to yourself. And there's no way you can keep on lying to yourself and not generate some form of guilt when you believe in what the world teaches. So you can't keep telling yourself you don't deserve to have people love you or be treated right or to receive support in your world and then think that you are not going to create some kind of guilt or fear for yourself. Because when you lie to yourself, you don't feel good. And when you lie to yourself, you're not expecting good. So every time you're putting yourself down, you're lying to yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. oh, I hear your story. I hear your story. I know. We all got our story. And our story is there to teach us how to love more, to get us more in touch with the truth of who we are. But there's a point that you got to face the truth, doggone it. And the truth is you are entitled to love. You are entitled to miracles. You are entitled to be treated right because of what you are. You will receive miracles. Now, this is really cool. The reason why you're going to receive love is because of what your creator is. It has nothing to do with you. If it was up to you to receive love based on what you learned from the world, you'd never have any love. So the reason why you're going to get love is because of what the nature of what your creator is. God is love. God is a loving being. Your creator is a loving being. So even though you may not think you deserve it, eh, spirit don't care about that. I'm still going to love you because I'm a loving person. See what I'm saying? I, if I'm going to be a loving person with you, then I'm going to give you the love because I want to give you the love and not because of what you do to deserve it. So you are, you are going to receive my love because of what I am. See what I'm saying? Dude, I'm, I'm treating you nice because of who I am. I, I'm grateful for you today because of who I am. And that's what we were just told. He says, and you will offer miracles because you're one with God. So at some point, you're going to realize you are this loving being, and you're going to join with the loving being that created you. And then what are you going to do? He says, well, then you're going to start offering love, and you're going to start offering fun, and you're going to start offering miracles to people because you got the hook up. I'd be a nervous wreck, wreck teaching the Course in Miracles full time if I thought it was any particular person that is the source of the substance or money or whatever I need to live in the world. Then, then every time my classes change and anybody change, I go through panic. So why don't I do that? Well, because I've been doing it for 43 years and I've seen literally thousands of people sit in front of me. And the only thing that's been consistent is God. And my gratitude who, to everybody that was willing to be a channel. So I'm profoundly grateful to you. But I definitely don't think you're the source of my good. But you're definitely, I hope I'm the channel for some good for you 
and you the channel. Because then I don't put that kind of pressure on you, and then I can accept you however you express yourself with me. Whether you give me anything or you don't. So it's hard to be loving towards somebody that you are expecting to act out your fantasies and your scripts in order for you to be happy. Because if I need you to be a certain way for me to be happy, I'm going to try to control your behavior. And the more afraid I get and the more insecure I get, the more I'm going to try to control you. And nobody that loves you is going to allow themselves to be controlled by you. So you're guaranteed to lose the loving person if you try to limit them. So think about that the next time that your ego is tempted to try to manipulate someone in a relationship to be the way you want them to be. If the way you want them to be is very opposite from the way they want to express themselves and they love themselves, they're not going to allow themselves to stay in a relationship with them that they're being limited unless they're with a person who wants the same limitations they want. Right, So that means that if I'm in a relationship with someone and we have similar values and we have a similar agreement about how we're going to handle this and what the rules of our relationship is, then we are going to have peace with each other in that relationship. If you want a monogamous relationship and I want a monogamous relationship, I'm not going to be worried about you being with somebody else in whatever way we defined we wanted to do that. Because we want the same thing. Mm -hmm. All you have to do to have peace with somebody is want the same thing. Is what the Course says. He said, simplicity is a line in here that goes, simplicity is very difficult for twisted minds. <laughs> that cracked up. <clears throat> the, you, the, the more twisted your mind is, the harder it is for you to accept simple truths like, you're going to be in harmony with somebody that shares your purpose that's like you. And you're going to be in constant conflict with somebody that's opposite to you in every way. Unless your love is big enough to love what appears to be different from you. Which is the biggest level of love there is. Is to be able to love people who seem like they're different from you. So, by, so the next time you want to get with somebody that's totally opposite from you in every way. Uh, just remember, it can work. But it's going to call for a level of unconditional love that you may or may not find out you're capable of. Because you'll be trying to change them from being the way they are to be the way you want them to be. If you're doing unconditional love, then if they're being peaceful, then their personality can express however they wants to express. So I wouldn't be trying to get you to give up what you like because I want you to do it for me if I loved you. It's easy to tell who I it's easy to tell who I love. It's easy to tell who loves me now. It used to be hard to tell when I was loving myself and when I wasn't, or when somebody was loving me and when they weren't. Do you know that you're irresistible to somebody that really loves you? They can't resist you. So if you chase them, stalking them, and got a chain around their neck, they might not be the right one. <laughs> that would be a form of irresistible. I thank you. That's right. They couldn't do nothing. They couldn't go nowhere. So, so the Course in Miracles says, see, 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 to me, I've been talking five minutes. It's 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. in. See, just when I'm getting warmed up, it's always time for me to stop. You know, uh, while some people, they, I'm sure that they feel like it's the longest 40 minutes of their entire life. <laughs> you know, it just depends on where you are, right? Um, <laughs> Because every word, because I tried, again, I want the Course in Miracles to be practical. I, I, my, my desire, even though my happiness doesn't depend on it, my desire is that people will take something that they've heard today and apply it to their personal life. Rather than it be compartmentalized like people do with spiritual stuff is, I go to church from 11 to 12, I hear something spiritual, and then I leave and I go back into my world and I do everything just the way I, I always do it because I went to church on Sunday morning. See, I, I, my preference is that that's not what my classes are. Just something that sounds like cool ideas and then you walk out and forget them. If you walk out today and you believe you're entitled to miracles and that because God loves you, your creator loves you, you're going to be given miracles of love. And then because you are getting the miracles of love, you're going to start giving them yourself. And that's how simple salvation or your healing is. Is what? Give what you want to receive. Give what you want to receive. Give what you want to receive. 
give what you want to receive. Whatever I want in my life, I become it. Whatever I want in my life, I try to become it. If I want more loving, fun people in my life, I try to be a more loving, fun person myself. Whatever you want, become it. Whatever you want, become it. Whatever you want, become it. You want more freedom? Then free yourself. Then the Course in Miracles says, so your salvation is merely a statement of your true identity. It is this, what? Your true identity that we're going to celebrate today. So what are we going to celebrate? Your true identity. How do you know you don't know? Thank you. How do you know that you don't know what your true identity is? If you, don't, if you are not excited about you, if you don't turn you on, then you don't know who you are. You're not in touch with your true identity. If the idea of you, if the idea of you being you doesn't turn you on, you don't know your true identity. You don't really know who you are. So the Course in Miracles says, we're going to celebrate the fact that you are loving, loved, and lovable. I'm going to celebrate that you are loving. So at first, a lot of times it looks like I'm trying to say more loving, positive things to people than they can respond to. You know, I, I try to make a point of saying as many loving things sincerely as I can to people. But what I've learned is you gotta, I got to let go of any of my attachment to how you respond to me trying to be loving to you. Because I've experienced that most people uh, don't respond at all. Right. You'd be thinking, wow. Now you cuss them out and you tell them what's wrong with them and then they get mad and they're angry and they're upset and you got all kinds of energy. But you say, you guess what? You're entitled to love because of what you are. You're going to receive love because of what your creator is. You're going to receive so much love, you're going to know you're one with your creator. And then you're going to start offering the miracles. And then you're going to start offering the love because you realize you're just celebrating your identity because you are loving, you are lovable, you are beautiful. And so you're just celebrating yourself. So if you've been programmed that you're a moron, then uh, that there's something wrong with you, then you have to hear that over and over and over and over again before it begins to impact you. So your claim about miracles, if you want miracles, if you want love, do you know that none of the love you want, none of the happiness you want, lies in what? Your false ideas about yourself. When he says illusions, he's talking about your false ideas or your fears. So none of the things that you want are, are going to lie in your anger, guilt, grievances, or fear. So there's nothing about your anger, your guilt, or your grievances that's going to bring you anything that you really want. I know you're mad, I know you're angry, I know you feel guilty, I know you feel upset, I know you feel jealous, but not one type of love and happiness that you want is going to be found in any of those. So do you know that people will stop doing something faster because it doesn't work? then they'll stop doing something because it's bad or good? Do you know that people feel guilty all the time and then do the same thing over and over again that they feel guilty about? Have you ever done it? Have you ever felt guilty about that extra slice of cake you said you weren't going to eat and then you go ahead and eat it anyway and then you feel guilty? That's what the Course is saying. Making somebody feel guilty is not going to get them to stop anything you're trying to get them to stop. <laughs> You know, anything you're trying to end, trying to make yourself or make somebody else feel guilty about doing it, will not end that behavior. It just increases it. But what, so then what will stop a person from doing the same thing over and over again that they see as harmful? Well, the Course in Miracles says, well, what will stop them is to know it's not going to work. If you know that you cannot create ice cubes in an oven, and you see that's not going to work, you, what are you going to do? You're going to stop putting the ice tray in the oven because it doesn't work. It's not going to get you what you want. So it's better to tell yourself that something isn't going to get you what you want if you want to stop doing it than it is telling yourself it's bad or good. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. yeah. See, uh, 
Me seeing myself as guilty and separate from you is not going to give me what I want. Me seeing myself as a victim to you is not going to give me what I want. Me judging and condemning myself is not going to give me what, my, what I want. Me attacking you, thinking that that's going to make you love me more, is not going to give me what I want. Because where I, before I started working on my spiritual path, I used to try to use anger to get people to do what I wanted them to do. And guilt to get people to do what I wanted them to do. I actually thought if I attacked them enough, then they would obey. Anybody familiar with that, that process? In other words, the course, I love how the course puts it. You all think that anger makes friends. And that's why I had never thought about it that way. But that's exactly right. I'm thinking that if I show you my anger and upset, you're going to treat me better. And the more I go off on you, the more you're going to treat me better. So the court says your claim to miracles doesn't lie in your illusions about yourself. They don't, they don't lie in the lies that you're telling yourself. Then it says, and also the miracles, the love, doesn't depend on any magical powers that you have ascribed to yourself. Now, what is a magical power? from a Course in Miracles perspective. <laughs> Do you know that a magical power is anything that you think you've done on your own? Mm -hmm. you know, like control, trying to be perfect. Believing, you've, believing that you've created anything without God. Mm -hmm. Believing that, your, that what you, your resolutions and your solutions are really what's giving you the answers to study. He says, ma a magical power, magic is nothing but you depending on yourself and thinking that you're doing anything without that which created you. So he says, also, uh, your receiving love doesn't depend on any rituals that you have devised either. So all of us got our personal rituals, which we call our personal habits, mm -hmm. right? And so the Course in Miracles says, I'll say it to you again, because he says it over and over again. So let me tell you again, uh, you receiving good and you receiving abundance and you receiving love is inheriting the truth of what you are. Just because of who you are, things could and you deserve for things to go right for you. <clears throat> I don't have to earn anybody's love. As a matter of fact, anybody whose love I have to earn, I know don't love me. And won't. So I know at first it will seem like there's not a lot that's pretty slim pickings out there. You know what I'm saying? I understand that at first it will seem like, well, I don't know any people that love unconditionally and can really give freedom and give you love no matter what you do. I know you don't know anybody like that because you're not. <laughs> what? I just told you that you have to be what you want to have. You'll see those kind of loving people in your life when you, as you become one of those kind of loving people. That's the way it's set up. Because I don't want anybody coming in the club that's different. I want people coming into the love club that's full of love. I don't. I don't want the hellraisers coming into the love club. <laughs> so, you, so, so you can't get in my club until you're loving too. And then we, then what happens? We've just increased the love, not divided it. If you join with somebody in a partnership, you should be moving faster and lighter, not heavier and dragging. You need help moving the sofa. You don't want somebody that's going to sit on it. <laughs> that's what most relationships are like. Where you could be enjoying the trip, you're still trying to convince the person to take the trip with you. Stop it. You're that's stupid. And you're not stupid anymore. <laughs> <laughs> And you know if you be honest with yourself, that's all you can say about certain periods in your life. You be going, I was so stupid. I know God is real. I survived that. I remember jumping out the window. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be sincere, but I swear I'm not going to be serious, so you're going to be disappointed. Okay, the, 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 the Course in Miracle says, uh, <clears throat> none of the rituals that you come up with are going to give you the miracle. Also, it, you're going to have a miracle because of the truth of what you are. And it, you're going to get a miracle, which is the love that you want and the happiness that you want. It's implicit in what your creator is. 
uh, that you're going to one day, like those fairy tales say, and they lived happily ever after. That's going to happen to you. You're going to live happily ever after. You're going to be, I'm cheating. I'm doing the spoiler. I'm taking you to the end of the book. Okay? The, the end of the book is, you are entitled to miracles of love and joy and abundance and peace and fun and happiness and healing, and you are going to have that, and you're going to have it forever. That's the spoiler. How you got to the point that you let yourself experience it, that's your journey. Does that make sense to everybody what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, I, I, you're going to end up happy, but with your day-to-day -day reality is the way you brought it about. But we know how it's going to end. You will end up in joy and peace. Then people go, well, what about people that it seemed like they died and they certainly weren't happy? Well, the first thing is you're showing how little awareness you have of who you really are because you still think people die. Bodies die. Bodies die. Bodies die. Bodies die. Bodies die. People don't. Spirits don't. Spirits continue to live. They continue to live. You just aren't in communication with them. Why? And I'll tell you why. Because you don't believe you can communicate with them. You don't believe they exist. And they don't have bodies. And bodies are what we use to communicate with. So they don't have a body. You have a body. The reason why you all are hearing me right now is why. Yeah, because I have a body and you have a body and you're using your body's senses to listen to me and I'm using my body's senses to talk to you. If I didn't have a body and you didn't have a body, you wouldn't be listening to me right now. As a matter of fact, if you did hear me talking to you right now and I didn't have a body, you'd probably be upset. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. That all of a sudden we just started to hear a, 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 a voice Right now, I don't care how spiritual we are. We'd be like, I'm getting the hell out of here. You know, you'd be like trying to get out that door. I, I knew I shouldn't have come in the first place. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have come in the first place. You know, you know, I knew. I'm telling you, it's the answers are available and the answers are simple. We just don't want to hear them yet. So what the course says, well, today we're going to claim them. He said, I love this. He says, your, your miracles were assured in your creation and your miracles are guaranteed by the laws of God. So you are guaranteed to be loved. You're guaranteed to be freed. See, I, why am I saying this, you all, regardless of our response? Who can tell me? Is it true? And it's true, and what do I need to do to make sure I really accept it as true? Listen and, and listen to it and repeat it. So you're seeing me practicing <clears throat> what the Course in Miracles is saying while I'm teaching. Right? So then I can't make my happiness dependent on how you respond because you're also in the process of letting yourself accept it to a whole brand new level. We all in we all at the learning level, right? So he says, What are we gonna do today? He says, Well, today we're gonna claim the love, the miracles that are your right. Why? Because they belong to you. Love belongs to you. It's your right. So we promise. You've been promised. What is it that you've been promised? He says, well, you've been promised. You've been promised full release from the world you made. I promise you, the creator is saying, I promise you I'm going to release you from every fear, anxiety, and upset you've ever made. I'm going to free you from every problem you've ever made. Our creator is saying, I will free you from every full release from the world you made. <sighs> You've been assured that the kingdom of God is within you and you can never lose it. So I'm going to tell you again, love is inside you and you can never lose it. Spirit is inside you and you can never lose it. Your good is inside you and you can never lose it. Your, your spirit is inside you and you can never lose it. You are a beautiful being. Nothing can ever change that and you can never lose it. And you always deserve to be loved no matter what, just because you were born, just because of who you are. Yes. So what are we asking for today? He says, well, we're not doing anything but asking for what belongs to us. 
So what are you supposed to do? I'm asking for the love that belongs to me. I'm asking for the friends that belong to me. I'm asking for the career that belongs to me. I'm asking for the money that belongs to me. I'm asking for the, the peace that belongs to me. I'm asking for the God that belongs. I'm only asking for what belongs to me. I want what belongs to me. You can never lose something that belongs to you. People don't like sometimes like that word belong. I don't want to belong to you, but that's what we treat people. We treat like they we treat them like they belong to us. Mm -hmm. So when somebody actually says but somebody belongs to you, well, I don't want to mean, I don't want, I don't want to even say that word. You treat them like they belong to you when you're upset about something you're trying to get them to do. So he says right here. So I want you to ask for no more than what belongs to you. So what what is it that belongs to you? A miracle. A miracle belongs to you. Love belongs to you. Health belongs to you. Happiness belongs to you. Then what does it say next? Then it says, uh, you can never lose it. So what am I asking for? Earl Purdy, is, Earl Rodgers Purdy is asking for love he can never lose. Happiness he can never lose. Freedom he can never lose. Health he can never lose. Loving relationships that he can never lose. I want what belongs to me, and I want what I can never lose. That's what I should be focusing in on if I want my thoughts to create my reality. That's the kind of thought I want to have if thoughts create reality. I want to have the thought that love is going to come to me and happiness is going to come to me and peace is going to come to me just because I'm here. Because that's what happens with wealthy people. When people inherit their wealth, they just get born and then they, they got $900 million waiting for them. They didn't, they didn't earn any of that. It was their inheritance because of who their parent is. But of course, the miracles are saying, what y'all jokers, don't you know that this is true about your relationship to God? That you are entitled to love and happiness and peace and healing because it's your inheritance as a child of God. Because of who your parents are. Parent. If you want to even use that kind of symbology. So look at it like you are the, the child of a wealthy father and mother. And you deserve your inheritance. And you're going to get it. In fact, you've already gotten it. You just don't know it because of the stupid stuff you're telling yourself. Yeah. And then the stupid people you're around telling you the same thing and you believing it. And then having stupid partners that you get in relationships with that's telling you what's wrong with you all the time and how you need to change in order for them to be happy. And you find yourself attracted to them more than anybody because you think they're telling you what you mm -hmm. really believe about yourself, which is that you're worthless and you don't really have real value. And they are there to show you that you're right. And then you wonder where the person that loves you. <laughs> you don't realize that you are a child. It's like you are, you are in a royal family, but you've forgotten it. Or you were separated, you know. And you don't know you come from a rich parent. And then I come along and say, well, I'm here to tell you <laughs> that you actually are the child of a very wealthy parent. And you have all kinds of inheritance that's available to you. But you don't know it, but you still got it even though you don't know it. So what I need to do is get rid of the part of you that thinks the inheritance isn't yours. And it's easy to do that. I just need to tell you the truth over and over and over again. And you keep telling yourself this over and over again. Then we get together and tell it to each other over and over again. Because the more people who believe in an idea, do you know the more people that believe in an idea, the stronger the idea becomes? And the stronger the idea becomes, the quicker it manifests physically. And the person you're in special relationship with is a person that you're listening to more than anyone else. So your closest, the, your closest relationships, they're the ones that are reinforcing beliefs more than any other persons or persons that you know. Who in the heck do you hang around with? Who do you invest your time in? What kind of relationship do you have with the people who are intimate with you? How often are they reminding you that you deserve love just because of who you are? And I'm going to give it to you because of who I am. And then the two of us are going to join together, and we're going to be giving some love to everybody else too. Because then that will give us even more. Yeah. Right. See, your giving should be just like somebody pouring water in this glass until it overflows. Then everybody gets the overflow. You keep a full glass all the time. That's the way it works. You're giving out of your abundance. You're giving out of your... You don't feel like because you took that person to the movie, you broke. 
you did it out of your abundance that you could share that without feeling any sense of lack on your part. As a matter of fact, if you're really smart, you know it's increasing what you have. A dumb person is stingy. Because they don't think they have. But does that change the fact that they do have miracles? So even when you are not loving yourself, you can still have great things happen to you. It just shocks you. When you don't love yourself and good things happen, it kind of shocks you. You go, whoa, how did that happen? Yeah. Well, it happened because you deserve love even when you don't think you deserve it. You deserve help even when you don't think you deserve it. You deserve abundance if, even if you're the stingiest person that ever walked the earth. You still deserve love. You still deserve to be happy. That's what this book is teaching me. People are like, how do you, why do you keep reading this? Why I'd have to be stupid not to? It's reminded me of who I really am. So, we're not asking any more than what really belongs to us <clears throat> in truth. And uh, today we'll, we're going to make sure, what is we going to make sure of? He says, well, we're going to make sure we're not going to be content with anything less than what we deserve. I'm not going to be satisfied with anything less than what I deserve. I'm not going to be satisfied with any relationship that's giving me anything less than I deserve, any aspect, nothing. I'm not going to be satisfied with anything less than the love I deserve. But do you know that that just explains why most people are not satisfied? Because they're always giving themselves less than what they deserve. So if you're discontent, you're discontented because you come into the realization that you're giving yourself less than what you deserve. Did you hear me? You know, you know who I'm talking to. You, you, know, you know who I'm talking to you, right? Yeah. Why are you so dissatisfied? Because you know you're giving yourself crap. You know you deserve a better relationship than you're giving yourself. You know you deserve better health than you're giving yourself. You know you deserve better uh, peace, more peace than you're giving yourself, more forgiveness than you're giving. You know you just you're not giving yourself what you deserve to give yourself, and you call it. I'm not content with my job. I'm not content mm -hmm. with my mate. I'm not content with my spiritual development. All the places you are not content is really symbolic of you knowing you deserve more than you're giving yourself. It's really an affirmation that you do have high self-esteem, self-esteem, and you do know you really deserve the best that life has to offer. That's why you're discontent. And you'll never be satisfied with less you, than, than what you deserve. So wherever, it doesn't mean wherever you're dissatisfied in your life is where you're not giving yourself what you deserve in your perception. Yes, be glad about that then. Because that's your affirmation that I know I deserve more than what I'm giving myself right now. That's a positive affirmation. Mm -hmm. Your discontent is a positive affirmation. I'm going to finish this, 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 uh, this two paragraphs. I'm going to finish it. and I, I, Everybody's answer if you need to go. That's fine. I want to finish this complete thought so a person can listen to this whole lesson and get the whole thing. Because it's positive. Um, <clears throat> do you have any areas of your life that you have any discontentment with in any way? Okay, then remind yourself that that's the area that you know that you believe you deserve better than what you're giving yourself. Then he says, don't be content with less than what you deserve. Stop compromising. Of course, the miracle says something other books don't say, like, uh, compromise is the worst thing you can do. Because compromising just means you're giving yourself a little bit of what you want and giving up the rest of what you want. And so all you're really doing is building resentment. So don't compromise. You deserve to be treated with love, and you deserve respect, and you deserve safety. Don't you dare be in any kind of situation or circumstance that's giving you less than that. Don't compromise on the good you think you deserve and how you think you deserve to be treated. Even if it looks like for a while you're all by yourself in the body and it doesn't look like there's a lot of people around you, that's a good thing. That means you're in transition. You're not, everybody's not going to go with you when you decide to finally treat yourself with love. Those parts of you and those people you know who still think suffering gives them something that they want, they'll replace you. And they'll replace you with somebody who will give them what you used to give them. 
and fulfill the role you used to fulfill. And you have to be willing to let those people go. And then there are going to be people who are going through the same transition that you're going through. And you'll find, heck, y'all still in the room together. Y'all still on the journey together. Then there'll be some people that you have to consciously choose out of relationship with. Yeah. You have to just, uh, it, 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 don't wait for it to just fade away. You might have to go, you know what? I'm going to have to choose. I wish you the best. I want the best for you. I have no ill will whatsoever, but we're going in two different directions right now. And so I'm going to have to go in. The, uh, the, the, one of, uh, one of, think of this line from the course. Recognize misery and go the other way. What do you do when you recognize a bear? You go the other way if you can. You don't stop and process. You don't sit down and have a discussion with the bear. Right? You recognize, oh, Lord, there's a bear. I'm going the other way. You, do you have bear jobs? Do you have a bear relationship? Do you have a bear condition in your life that now you're all analyzing it instead of going the other way? So the Course in Miracles says, well, this is what I want you to do. I want you to begin the longer practice period by telling yourself quite confidently that I am entitled to miracles. Okay, let's say that. I am entitled to miracles. Now close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. Remind yourself that you're asking only for what is rightfully yours. I am asking only for what is rightfully mine. Say what? I am asking only for what is rightfully mine. Remind yourself, what is it you need to remind yourself of? Remind yourself that miracles are never taken from one and given to another. Together, miracles are never taken from one and given to another. What? Miracles are never taken from one and given to another. So your, nobody else can get your love. Somebody, nobody else can steal your love. Because your love is never, love is never taken away from you and given to somebody else. And sometimes it seems like that happens in special relationships where the person used to love you and the love that they used to uh, give you, now they're giving that love to somebody else. So what would the Course in Miracles say about that? The Course in Miracles would say, no, the, the, the specialness that you used to have is now being given to somebody else. The specialness they used to give you, the attention they used to give you is being given to somebody else. But love, real love, can never be taken from someone else and given to another. What? It can never be taken from someone else and given to another. What's the next? In asking for my rights, I am upholding the rights of everyone. Together? Mm. In asking for my rights, I am upholding the rights of everyone. Do you know that miracles do not obey the laws of the world? Miracles, true healing, true love does not obey the laws of the ego. True love, true healing does not, does not, does not obey the laws of the ego, the laws of fear. True love, miracles, true love merely follows from the laws of God. So what? That's, I say true love, miracles, miracles merely follow from the laws of love. There are laws of love, L-O-L. That's another L-O-L. The laws of love, the laws of love. Miracles follow from the laws of love. The laws of love, the laws of love. Miracles follow from the laws of love. Miracles follow from the laws of God. After this brief introductory phase, what do you do? What do you do? You quietly wait. What do you quietly wait for? You quietly wait for the assurance that your request is granted. So after you say those affirmations, then you're being told, just be quiet for a minute. Just be quiet for a minute and be assured that your request for love and peace and healing is granted. Why? Why, are these, why, why is my desire for love and peace and miracles going to be granted? He says it's going to be granted because you've asked for the salvation, which is the healing of the world. You are asking for the healing of the world. Together, I am asking for the healing of the world. Again, I am asking for the healing of the world. I am asking for my healing. I am asking for my healing. 
what? I am asking for my healing. What does that mean? It means I am asking for my happiness. I am asking for my happiness. Together, I am asking for my happiness. I am asking for the happiness of the world. I am asking for the happiness of the world. You have been assured that you will be given the means by which this is going to accomplish, be accomplished. What? I'm going to give you the way to accomplish your happiness. Spirit is saying, hey gang, I'm going to give you the way to, I'm going to give you the way to accomplish your goal. I'm going to give you the way to accomplish your goal of being truly loved and truly happy and truly peaceful. I'm going to give you the way to accomplish miracles. I am going to give you the way, the means to accomplish miracles. You cannot fail. You cannot fail. You cannot fail. You can't fail. You can't fail. You can't fail. You can't fail. You cannot fail. You cannot fail. You cannot fail to be assured. You cannot fail to be assured. I am assuring you that you cannot fail. Why is it that you cannot fail? Because I'm going to give you the means to accomplish this. And the means are going to be so easy. You are just asking that the will of God be done. So I ask that the will of my creator be done together. I ask that the will of my creator be done. I ask that the will of love be done. I ask that the will of love be done. And we've already been told what, what love's will, what God's will is. For you to have miracles. For you to have expressions of total love all the time that never ends. Happiness, peace, and joy that never, ever ends. That's what you're asking for. That's, that's what you're having the courage enough to ask for, even if you don't know how to do that. Even if you don't know how that type of unlimited happiness would happen. Well, how is none of your business? How it's going to happen is none of your business. How it's going to happen is none of your business. How it's going to happen, happen is none of your business. How your true happiness and true peace and true joy and true healing and true forgiveness is going to happen is none of your biz business. But why it happens is your business. And when it happens is your business. And you can have it happen now. So mighty companions, <clears throat> let's remind ourselves of this. Be around people who will remind you that you're a priceless treasure, who will never let you forget that you have value. Don't be around stupid people. Stupid people are people who don't know how to love and forgive. They're just cause for love. And I'm saying stupid because none of us wants to be stupid. And a part of us gets offended just hearing the word. I purposely say what I say the way that I say it. So, I am going to take care of the donation part of what we do. Um, and believe me, I'm thankful for whatever you share. And uh, you're innocent whether you do or you don't. Those of you online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, I'll see if I can make that easy. You can use Venmo, you can use the Cash App, you can use PayPal, you can use Zelle, and you can go to my website, www.earlpurdy.com. Those of you, uh, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions. I'm available to, for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions. Uh, let me help you. Uh, I'm also available for astrological and numerological readings. That's also another way the Spirit communicates through me. That's also available. Go to my website, earlpurdy.com, and look under Clarity Sessions, 
and you and you get a chance to self book a session if you like to, and you can also get more details about it. Mm. Don't forget to watch this and listen to it at least four times. Every Sunday, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, online and in person, I do a uh, Facebook Live, A Course in Miracles, at 1555 Race Street in Denver, Colorado. 1555 Race Street, uh, 80206. So I'd love to see you in the place. And I'm also very grateful for people watching the replays and, and the... Uh, trying to do the thing that they know is really going to make the difference, which is the remembering part, not the analyzing part, but the remembering remembering part. And all of my classes are on YouTube, so you can watch on YouTube, so you don't have to be necessarily be a member of Facebook to benefit from the classes that I've done, because I've got hundreds and hundreds of them on uh, YouTube also. Ah, make sure I covered everything. I'm on, and it's the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Earl Purdy page on Facebook. 1 p.m. Sundays, Mountain Time. 7 p.m. Thursdays, Mountain Time. So I'm here to help. I'm here to be truly helpful. I'm here to be truly helpful. So, mighty companions, would you be willing to say three times, not four times, I am entitled to miracles? Okay, let's go. And just repeat after me, that'll make it easier. Take a deep breath, please. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. Again. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. Would you be willing to say it for each other by saying you are entitled to miracles? What? You are entitled to miracles. And look around. You are entitled to miracles. Say what? I say you are entitled to miracles. What about we? Take a breath. We are entitled to miracles. We are entitled to miracles. What? We are entitled to miracles. Let's give it up, mighty companions, for us. Remember, enthusiasm, what does it do? It creates. It creates. And what is discontent telling you? I, deserve, I know I deserve more than, better than what I'm giving to myself right now, and you are entitled to it. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Love you, love you, love you, love you.